Hello, welcome back. It's that Royal Range Rover again. Right, we're digging in. Deeper. We're still on the passenger side. Bulkhead. But enjoy the video. Please, thumbs up. Please, comment. Please subscribe. And if you think you're subscribed, double check. YouTube is doing some pretty odd stuff. Apologies for any shaky video in this particular episode. Um, I had a problem with the rock steady feature of my little DJI Osmo Action Pro camera. Uh, it disabled itself. Don't quite know how it did that, but it did. So rather hoping now that order is resumed, but there may be chunks of this video shot before I made this introduction. Okay, enjoy the video. Trimmed this edge down on the front of all the rusty metal. It needs trimming a little bit further, not much though. And I have started the bend on the top edge of the repair panel. Um, it needs welding, obviously. And then I thought, you know what, let's offer this piece up as well. And when I line that up against where the <coughs> bonnet catch went, That'll work, I reckon. What I really want to do is when I weld this, I want to pull the repair panel forwards very, very, very slightly, like that. Okay, so it just wants to pull very slightly forwards um, in order to weld onto this. I've got to weld it more or less on the car uh, and then take it off to put the seam along the edge of it. Um, but that's, that's going to work. And that repairs pretty much the whole top edge of the bulkhead there i want to get this done before it all goes in for you know for the final cut um, and then obviously i need to make up a section along this edge here now that was 18 gauge steel one point whatever mil um, i'm going to make this repair here along this edge out of 20 gauge and really what i want to do here is just get myself a strip of steel that goes from one edge to the other very slight lip weld it on underneath here so that it gives me a nice flat edge to push against the repair section on here. And that'll work. That will work. Quick update. Welded in the repair section for this lower level. Repair section for the upper part of the bulkhead, the outer skin of the bulkhead. Uh, welded the frame back into place. And now a quick dusting of uh, some some uh, well through primer. Trim this piece to shape at the lower edge down here because it's not quite trimmed how I want it to. It's not far off, maybe a millimetre round. Uh, and then I'm going to weld this bastard back in. Yes. Welded that in and then somewhat annoyingly I've run out of um, sanding belts, uh, which are very useful at tidying up some of these welds, especially in there. <laughs> there was some contamination on the steel in there, you could see. Uh, but that will soon be tidied up, make sure everything's watertight. Um, I chopped off this end piece purely because it's rotten. So I need to make up another bit now that's going to go in there, weld that on and then make up the section that goes along the front here so that that can go back on there which is not far off doing now actually okay i think right i need to separate that off there as well another reason for cutting it away um, is really just so that i can tidy it up this needs to be welded on quite tightly this this obviously um has the uh the spring for the bonnet bonnet oh, i guess easing spring i don't know tell me anyway um so i'm gonna obviously sand that off tidy it up take it off that piece of metal at the base there line that up put it back on again then I can start fucking around with the side piece then. That's exactly what's going to happen. 
How about that? Getting ready uh, to power up the old welder again. Uh, welding that bit. Uh, still not got my belts yet. Uh, so I thought I'd actually attack these chunks down here. Now, <clears throat> what I do here is I make a cut with an angle grinder and then get the reciprocating saw in there because it's less uh, kind of aggressive on the metal, less aggressive on the sparks flying all over the place. You can see I've got fire blankets, courtesy of Dale, thank you, uh, kicking around, pardon me, all over the place. Um, so what I do then is I, I'll use the reciprocating saw to take the original piece out. I need to find the spot weld to take this entire chunk out and then I can weld in another entire chunk. Now at the moment this whole section is now loose because obviously it's separated from here um, and everywhere else. So let's see what we can do. That's the fixing there for the LPG which I need to put back up there. Don't want to lose that. Right, there's a piece of music filming for you, Richard. Um, yeah, good effort that. Um, so, um, yeah, find the spot welds and I'll be able to um, work with that. And then I can... Oh, there's another hole down there. I'll, I'll do the, the inner wing first and then I'm going to work on the foot weld. Before I do the foot weld, I'm seriously considering taking this off. Uh, and the main reason I'm taking this off uh, is... Find Mr Torchy. Where's Mr Torchy gone? There he is. Put Mr. Torchy on here. The problem is, we here have got the A post, the A post, and the bulkhead side. So, there's three pieces of metal in this section here. As you can see, we've got a fair amount of blow that's going on in between those three sections. So, the A post is formed of a box section and a flat plate. The flat plate sits in the middle here, in between the bulkhead side um, and that piece there. So the outer section of the uh, A-post is looking in good order. The bulkhead is a little bit compromised, but the closing piece that sits in between the two looks to be uh, somewhat rotted out. Now, when we go on the inside here, there we are, that there, that's the edge of the bulkhead side. And you can see up here, how it's got a little bit frilly, so the moisture is starting to work its way through. And it's only just the other side of this lip. So by taking this entire bulkhead side section out, I'm going to achieve a couple of things. First and foremost, I can make a repair to the inside face of the A-post. Secondly, I can treat the rust that commonly occurs in this area. And at the moment, you can see it started to rust. So by taking the spot welds out all the way down here, down here, disconnecting on the inside here, I should be able to remove this entire bulkhead side piece. And that's going to be something that I am going to do, because even if I end up replacing the entire bulkhead side piece, which isn't unfortunately possible because the top section um, needs the windscreen to come out, but I can work up to this level up here, um, I can certainly repair and get this edge to be a damn sight better than that which let's face it when we're at this stage of strip down doing this repair is going to be a lot easier um, now we've got spot welds that run along here up this edge to about there and there's a couple of spot welds at the top here and for some reason a number of cars I've seen there's been no spot welds in this area here so there's the first spot weld there I can feel it I'm running my finger down no spot welds, no spot welds, no spot welds, spot weld. And there's one there. So I've got one spot weld there. One there. One there. One there. One there. So they're an inch apart, apart from this hulking great section here. Isn't that weird? Right, OK. Um, so, yes, I'm going to carry on cutting out, um, taking out this rusty sections. I'm going to need to take off this uh, nice flammable material underneath here because that's just going to burn beautifully, isn't it? Um, and, uh, yeah, get these sections welded in. And then we can have this inner wing back to rude health. And the rest of it is, um... OK, there's a hole there. They all do that, sir. And there's a hole down here, which is because I think there's a patch gone in there um, directly where the, uh, the end of the Brooklyn sill goes to. And these are original fixings for the Brooklyn sill there as well, which might need to come off. 
might just need to come off. We'll see. Uh, it's a bit close to where I'm welding, really, for me to be that comfortable. Well, there we are. A uh, little extra fillet went in there uh, at the top edge because I just started finding thin metal, so I chopped it back a bit further, welded that in. I still need to dress these welds back properly, um, but that's now the top edge of the inner wing. This repair here, I just made a lip and folded it over the edge give it a bit more security. These two went on to the original lip that went on the base of the uh, of the outer curtain of the inner wing if you get my drift. Right so that's done that bit. Um, I've also extra located that bit which is alive obviously. That needs to go on there. You see I've already marked out roughly where it needs to go. I can get where it's on once I've got the side piece on. Um, so next I'm going to get this off, I think. Drilling the spot welds out, which I've marked up now. See if we can't extract this and see what's going on along this edge here. Um, I mean, for the sake of a duck, well, what's that? Three, six, nine spot welds um, and a couple of bits on the inside here. For the sake of that, it would be nice to get that off the car um, and sort this area out. So it's going to last as long as the rest of it is. Because having done all this work up here, I again, still need to finish these welds, so don't get excited about, God, Richard, what's up to your welding? Forgot to turn the gas on, that's what happened to my welding there. So once that all gets ground back uh, with the belt sander, I'll redo that bit. But the majority of it, well, it's effective. The gas was too low there, you see. But, and then, my big issue now is that, well, I'm out of gas. <laughs> just entering into the red section so that's my warning um, I need to get more gas on uh, on Monday um, yeah but at the moment I'm happy enough with that once the belt sanders are in uh, uh, the sanding belts are in I can tidy all these areas back and prime it get ready for uh, a top coat needs to talk to the customer whether he wants it blue or black bearing in mind how little of it you can see I'm inclined to go black um, Yes, right, now let's get this off. Just just drilling spot well. So I tend to start with a 4mm normal um, high-speed uh, metal drill bit and then I go at it with something like what would be in there normally. Oh, here it is. It's on the drill. One of those. And I find those very effective at uh, getting through bog-standard Land Rover uh, spot welds. Well, there it is. It came off, um, and as you can see, um, yeah, it's probably wise to take this off because it's done it. I've taken it off before it's become an issue. Now, what is going on? So you can see, because this is the innermost face of three sheets of steel, and you can see that the moisture has very clearly got in there. Okay, so it's never going to get any better. Get Mr. Torchy. On the inside, which is the closing panel of the A post, as I predicted, it's the worst piece. So I can chop that out and replace that. Uh, and then the outermost piece is the box section of the A post, which, to be honest, is actually looking pretty good. So I'm going to see if I can't separate out the inner section. Now, what was a surprise was that the floor, which actually looked pretty good before I started, um, had a massive ball of filler in this corner um, and it filled that hole and covered up this lip. So let me put that there. This lip here, that's factory, runs right the way across and it separates the upright of the footwell from the floor section which attaches onto the end of the sill over here somewhere, there. There? No, it's a bit further back than that. But you can see this is all sopping wet and this is all um, remains of filler and bits of rusty steel and bits of old sound deadening and all sorts of stuff. So it all needs to come out. Oh, there's a light bulb there as well. Look at that. Oh, I'll tell you what that is. That's the light bulb for the uh, indicators. Tuck that away over there. Um, so while it, it, it looks dramatic, doesn't it? But think of it 
like a giant Meccano set. So what's effectively happened here is we've lost the lip along that edge, that edge, and that's the remains of the lip here. And all of this lot was filled with filler. So it wouldn't have been long before, had I not taken this off, before water would have started working its way back in again. And this edge along here was never going to get any better than that. Um, so I think it's just a case of drilling out the spot wells down the edge there. See if we can't separate off a chunk of the uh, inner box section and, and work from there. And my pile of scrap steel down here is getting bigger. Um, but I've seen a lot worse. It could be that I replace the thing in its entirety. But like I say, getting it into this piece up here and it has blown a little bit, but nowhere near as much. Getting that in up there is actually a screen out job. Now, this is a soft dash only feature that the box that you're looking at there goes onto the edge of the bulkhead side section. So this piece here with these two pot rivets, uh, these two pot rivets, they were put in there to locate um, the, uh, the, the bulkhead side panel onto the A post. So it's an assembly pop rivet but you can see it goes up behind there now it's entirely possible that i could buy a new panel chop it off here and then weld it in without disrupting the screen um and it might might be the best solution but i think there's enough of this original panel wherever it's gone there i could do something with it because i mean that's pretty tough that surface I mean, it's pitted. Or do I just say fuck it and replace it? Yes, I think is the answer there. Interesting, that lip had disappeared. Because I thought I saw it on there, which is why I was drilling the spot welds. And probably drilling into, as you can see, two of them went straight through. Probably drilling into the lump of um, filler that was down there. We can sort this. We can. It's going to get better. I want those bloody sanding belts. Because I, I I weld a chunk, I sand the welds back. Otherwise, it just takes forever. You spend your life sanding. If you're not careful. Um. Right, now I've taken the heater out, by the way. I've taken the heater pipes out. Over here, we can see a little bit more... The devastation behind here. If I pull the brake line forwards again. Um, right now, all of this rot here is caused by what Paul uh, Atkinson's bespoke engineers calls the swimming pool, and it's an anomaly of the soft dash that from here to this point on the other side, water gets trapped. So this whole area ends up full of water. Um, and unless you drive on an incline, it's just going to stay there, which is why there's more rust along this area than this area. So my idea is going to be something along the lines of uh, once this is all repaired, is to drill holes forwards and into the engine bay at each end so it can drain the swimming pool, so to speak. But you can see how high up the um, damage from the swimming pool occurs. It's like, almost like a tide mark up there. It's not great, is it? So not only are you battling with um, rot along the top of the car, but you're also battling um, with your swimming pool in your bulkhead because of a design fault. Because all the all Land Rover had to do was drill a small hole in the forward face of that, and it wouldn't have been a swimming pool. It would have been a waterfall. Even attach pipes to it to take it down the back of the engine if you must, but I can't see that much moisture gets in there to cause that. Anyway, I'm happy with this. Um, less happy with that. I think it's going to end up being a new one, isn't it? You can get these new now. Um, I'll go and check the prices on them. Availability. 
because by the time I've made up that edge on the floor down there, repaired the, the, the two or three holes in the floor, uh, and of course I've got nice access to do that, repaired the inside edge of the B post, um, and got the heater out and repaired the ends of the swimming pool. This lot here, can you see it all? You can see where I'm shining straight through. Um, and you can shine through from inside the car as well and see outside. Uh. <laughs> yeah. That'll be why your car was filling up with water. Right. Welded the lip onto the edge of that forward panel there. You can see it under there. I might, now I know it fits, I might just take it off and just tidy up that bead of weld along the base there uh, while it's easy to access. Um, but yeah, I've got that to fit reasonably well. What I'm going to do here is weld that, weld the plug and then move this along. The reason being is it's going into quite a narrow channel up there. Um, there's not the room to get my big flat-footed uh, C clamp in there um, but everything lines up pretty much as it should do uh, and I think once then that's got a bloody great big blob of seam sealer in there that should be all right um, yes I think I do uh, make up this piece down here next I think I'm still waiting for the bulkhead side panels to arrive uh, I'm not going to bother putting that on until the bulkhead side panel's arrived. Now, what's interesting here is that that doesn't line up there, does it? I wonder why. Easiest way for me to check the alignment of this before I weld the chappie in is really just to kind of pop him back onto where the original spot welds are. Because I'm, I'm working one-handed, as is traditional. Give me one minute. Of equal clamps in the middle there right okay now now that's like that this lines up and does it line up with the original spot world yes it does so it's in the right place well that chappy welded on flat it back the plugs on the underside happy with that welded that in been flatting back the welds up here very 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 light skimmer filler over these um, over these welded repairs and it will look factory original um right more or less done on this side now um i, I really am just waiting for the panel to arrive what i could do is weld this back on so that's the inner piece of the a post i'll trim it once it's um once it's gone to size um yeah starting to come together oh yeah while I am waiting for the bulkhead side panel to arrive for the other side, I thought I'd start taking this side apart. Um, on the face of it, it's about the same sort of level of dereliction. Look at that, under there. By the swimming pool, that's, that's, that's something else, that is. That really is. Um, I don't quite understand what I'm going to do there yet. Um, right, so pretty much the same sort of level of strip down. I need to take the box out. I've taken the steering column out, fairly straightforward. You take the box off that goes around to the base of the steering column, undo the two bolts at the top, and then the steering column comes out. You have to rotate, wiggle it, and so forth. Then I need to take this frame out, which, on the face of it, had the thing not been gibboned around with, it would be a piece of cake. However, someone decided to wrap the LPG cabling either side of this bloody thing. Um, so... I've got myself now into a bit of a kerfuffle, I think. That is for the LPG switch. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to chop this fucking cable here. I, I can't, I'm, I'm fed up with it now. I'm bored. Um, as you can see, it's a bit, of a bit of a maze under here and I need to get all of this stuff out. So I want the whole loom really to go over this side in order that I can uh, uh, do the welding over here. And as you can see, the inside of the A-post is not looking quite as pretty as it was on the other side um, but again all fixable um, so to get that cage out really what I've then been doing is looking at this absolute fucking shambles of LPG so all of this shit here is LPG 
and all of that is LPG. I don't particularly want to start chopping wires and so forth, but it's some of the quality of this stuff is such that I might just do that. So for some reason we've got two wires which then go two blue wires go to a black wire. Oh. So this is why it's starting to cause me some bother. We've then got an earth that's going through. It's just... I think if it was factory, it would have been a piece of piss, really. Uh, so I think what I'm going to try and do here is try and get... Because the loom has been passed through the bulk here. So it's almost a case of, if I can chop it, pull the loom back inside, then when I poke it back through again, put a connector on it or pull it, I don't know. It all needs to come out because I need to work in this area. I can't have all this shit going through this hole. And of course, we've got hulking great connectors. Hulking great connectors. So chopping it would appear to make the most sense. Um, really, before I get to that point, I'm going to need to make a schematic of what is actually going on in here. Um, and it's all gone dark, isn't it? Because I left the torch out there. I think, I, like I said, I'm going to cut this one. Right, then I can take the cage out. Hello, cage. Nice big. That's what the equivalent, I guess, of the hard dash steering column cage. And there's all the bits for this side of the car. I'm just resting down there. Now, what can we see? Let's go and get Mr. Torchy. Oh, dear, 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 dear. So we've got that wire, which is just two wires, a brown and a blue. So that's easy enough. And there's the other end of it down there. Now, where does that then go to? Right, well, that then goes into the loom for the ECU there so that's probably just interfacing them with the injector wires i think um let's get the bulkhead blank panel out first and foremost because now i can see all the connectors for it um let's start to get all that out and then start to work out what on earth we need to do about all of this lot which most of which needs to come out of the way now on this they put a nice little plastic channel around there for the loom to be strapped into. Never noticed that on a soft dash before because I've never had a soft dash stripped down to this sort of level. Um, oh dear. I still haven't taken the heater out either. <laughs> I'm, I'm having to put my brave trousers on, folks. Yes. So, uh, the other thing I've noticed, by the way, is when I start looking at some of these connectors, like, for instance, that one there, who thought it was a good idea to put a bullet joiny connector there rather than just soldering it together again? Someone thought that that was a good idea. I'm going to have to do that again. Not this piece of footage. Do that connector again. So I think when all this lot comes out, um, I'm going to try and sort out the various bits and bobs that are causing so much grief here. Now, what I do need to look at here is because when I take the box, the pedal box out, it's going to take this with it. Is it going to take that with it too? I think it is, in which case I just think it's these zip ties here that hold it in place. So it could just be a case of getting the zip ties off and then this lot moves forwards. Uh, I need to take the brake warning off and then there's another sensor there there's a broken brake sensor there oh god help us no it's not broken it's just to come out well that wasn't even connected that's the sensor for the uh cruise control it does make you wonder though doesn't it it goes into the other hole for now down there There'll be a reason why you said for now then, chap. There really will be a reason. Right. So I'm going to crack on with this two-handed, I'm afraid, folks. Uh, you miss out. Um, and I'm going to see if I can't get this thing apart. Two-handed. Boop. Yes. 
Yes, I think I will. Right. Pedal box is out. Um, I found the bunch of wires which goes through the bulkhead, which actually only two of them I had to chop. It's a black and blue one. The red one's for the fuse. And then the other one, there's a plug there somewhere, uh, which is for the uh, for the switch. It's this bit down here. That can all go over there. That's out of the way. Um, properly out of the way. Now, we have got here a bit of a shambles. <sighs> it's not quite as nice as the other side. No. I think we'll have a scrape around and see what's going on. Before we go berserk, um, there is a dodgy old connection there. Fuck knows what's going on with this wiring. I just, I've cut two wires on it. That's all I've done. I don't want to go any further than that purely because I just, I've got no interest in uh, kind of messing around with the LPG. Now that chappy there is the, uh, that's the uh, brake sensor for the uh, cruise control. There we go. I knew I'd get there in the end. Now the cruise control pipe comes through the bulkhead about here. And check this out. I don't think you can see. Check this out. Get rid of the fucking torch, Richard. The cruise control vacuum pipe comes through the bulkhead. And look. I reckon that's quite an old split, that one. I reckon that did that a long time ago. Huh. And it's split right where it comes through the bulkhead. Silly thing. Anyway, that can come off and out of the way. Um, so the only real things I've got now on the inside here are the relays down here. So I'm going to take some pickies of those, get the loom through the bulkhead here, because it's all right there. Look at that lot. That's all the loom. So that can go through. And because I'm keeping the rubber um, on the loom, I know exactly which bit goes which side. There's a broken drill bit down there. Look at that. I wonder where that had gone. To the arse. Right. So the loom can come through. And then I think I can start looking then at what we're going to do about this inner wing. Yes. Headlight box isn't quite so pretty on this side either. Bloody thing. Right. Onwards. But well, that's it. Right, the loom is pulled out of the way and we can see the level of problems we've got here. Um, I suspect when I get in there with Mr Tappy that's going to start falling apart. Looks like there's less filler on this side, although that may be filler there. Uh, there's certainly a lot of water leaking in on this side and I suspect either that lot up there, because you can see how rusty it is, or this over here. One of those two areas uh, would have let all the water in. Uh, that said, uh, and I reserve my judgment, uh, the floor looks in good order. There's one patch over there which I'm less happy about, but I think for now I can start working on that. Uh, right, one thing that is interesting is the uh, these two chappies here, they mount the ECU onto the side panel. And someone's obviously been in here because the ECU, which is in the back here, there, was stuck on. Sticky tape. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Right. Okay. And now that's all out of the way, we can actually start to see what's going on. So this is tomorrow's job. I've had enough for now. Uh, I'm going home. Bulkhead mount doesn't look too bad though. The wing, I don't know. I really don't know. I couldn't tell you. I mean, it's obviously gone in much the same area. horrendous not like it feels soft and it's got a nice solid ring to it there 
we'll see what it's like down here when I start digging all this lot out. Um, but it could just then end up being the problem we've got is in this area. This magnificent area. And yes, that patch was welded onto the box. I had to grind that off, which is why it's shiny. Um, I definitely think we can do a bit better than that. It's going to be much the same as it was on the other side. I suspect we'll probably end up taking more of the bulkhead off on this side. We'll see. Right. I'm going home. I've got to fix the dishwasher. <laughs> Thank you.